In 1976, Texas Instruments introduced the Little Professor, the first ever electronic educational toy. It was wildly successful. The way it works is you choose your operation and level of difficulty, and the Little Professor gives you 10 math questions for you to answer, and it grades you out of 10 based on how many you got right. So it looks like a calculator, but it doesn't actually do math for you. It just gives you questions and tells you if you're right or wrong. Now, I don't have an extra 9-volt battery, so I can't show you this in action, but what happened after 1976 was Texas Instruments introduced a successor called the Wizitron. It doesn't seem to be known for sure, but apparently the Wizitron might have been exclusively produced for the Sears store. So it's possible that's why this is much rarer than the Little Professor, or at least part of the reason. Uh, the main reason would just be that the Wizitron is not nearly as big of a success as the Little Professor, but this is indeed a rare calculator, which I am showing you now in 4 Okay, so I really hope you enjoy it. I mean, look at this guy. Really a beautiful calculator. You got this cute wizard. I don't know if this, I mean, dragon ball looking orange circle is supposed to be the body of the wizard. If so, it is a rather large wizard. But let me zoom in here. You can take a nice look at his design. He's got like a puffy cloud type of beard. He's like got lightning bolts that appear to be powering the calculator. The calculator or, uh, you know, Wizitron, whatever you want to call it, it is actually turned on right now, although you can't really see it because the camera's frame rate does not pick up the lights on the Wizitron very well. But that's what it looks like on the back and on the front. As you can tell, its shape is very similar to the shape of the Little Professor. Although the Little Professor has this thinner top that kind of looks like a graduation cap on this scholarly fellow, whereas the Wizitron has a slightly bulkier top. The on-off switch on the Wizitron is a little bit strange. It's this guy here. I guess it's not strange. I just don't find it very fun to use. You, uh, I guess I push up to turn it off. Yeah, now it's turned off and you can pull this switch down to turn it on. It's just not the type of on-off interface I have ever seen with a calculator. Again, it's difficult for the camera to pick up the lights, but I will have a roundabout way of showing you the Wizitron in action shortly. First, let me just tell you why I have referred to this calculator, the Wizitron, as the most useless calculator in the world. Unlike the Little Professor, which lets you pick an operation, you see, I don't have any battery in it right now. It lets you pick an operation and then gives you some practice problems and tells you if you're right or wrong. The Wizitron doesn't even do that. The Wizitron basically just returns true false values. You have to make your own equations and give the answer. And the Wizitron will tell you if you are right or wrong. So, I mean, it just does absolutely nothing except say true or false. It doesn't even make the problems for you. Now, I usually use my iPad to give you an alternative angle of whatever piece of mathematical paraphernalia I'm looking at. Uh, but today, I'm going to use the iPad so that the camera can film the iPad, and in this way, you're going to be able to see the display of the Wizitron. Kind of an awkward solution, but I hope it'll work okay for you. So let me show you this Wizitron in action with a couple examples. Let's say we want to do one. You can see that there. Beautiful. One plus two. What's the correct answer to one plus two? Well, we press equals, and maybe we get it wrong just for kicks. One plus two is three, so let me try putting four. Ooh, and you'll see three E's pop up. If I do five, three E's pop up. That's wrong. One plus two is not three. Never has been, never will be. If I get it wrong a third time, let's say I press four again, then errors pop up again, and then it tells me the correct answer because I'm clearly too incompetent to figure it out myself. Let's do another example and let's actually get it right this time. Let's say we do two times six equals, and I have to put in the right answer, it is 12. And you can see it flashes because we got it right. Isn't that great? It doesn't do anything for you, but tell you if you've entered a true equation or a false equation. You can then press clear to put in another problem. Let's try something like, well, here's part of why this is kind of silly. It's like, if you're using the Wizitron to practice, I mean, suppose you're trying to practice your division. Do you even know what a good problem for division would be? 
if you don't already know division. Like, I know 81 divided by 9 is a fine division problem that this calculator can help me with. Um, but I only know that because I know that 81 divided by 9 is a nice integer. 81 divided by 9 is 9. And so I press that and it flashes, I'm correct. Uh, but if you weren't already good with your division, division uh, might be a little bit hard to come up with. It can do multiplication, no problem as well. Can we try 45 multiplied by 3? This is equal to 135. There it goes, flashing correct. Beautiful. Now what happens if we try to do division with a non-integer answer? Let's say we do 5 divided by 2. This equals 2 with a remainder of 1, so if I press, let's say, 2, then it's going to just put an R there. It's kind of weird. It doesn't even flash correct. It just puts an R next to my answer of 2, basically saying, yes, it is 2, but with a remainder. On the other hand, if we press 5 divided by 2 equals, and then put a wrong answer, like 3, it shows up with the error message as usual. I could press three again, it's an error. If I get it wrong a third time, then it will tell me the correct answer, which is two with the remainder, although this is not capable of telling me the fractional part or what that remainder is. I hope you'll forgive that lower resolution footage that I used just so that you could actually see this thing in action. As you can tell, the camera, the high quality camera anyway, doesn't pick up the screen or a display here all too well. But that is the Texas Instruments Wizitron. It is the most useless calculator in the world, perhaps. A successor to the Little Professor. Again, this came out in 1976. It was a huge hit. First ever electronic educational toy. And this guy came out in 1977. Not nearly as popular. You can imagine at least one reason why it doesn't create the problems for you, which feels like kind of a ripoff, but I don't know, it's kind of funny. It's so overkill to have a, a giant thing like this that just tells you if your equations are true or false. Um, I get a real kick out of it, and I'm happy to have it in my collection. Uh -huh.